Uh, Trimble SketchUp is one of my favorite, uh, inter or I, I would say one of my favorite uh, computer-aided design tools to introduce to students um, in my Intro to Steam classes. Um, it really, I, I would say, has a relatively easy learning curve, um, but also has some powerful tools um, that can allow you to get into some pretty advanced concepts um, in the realm of computer-aided design. Uh, usually as a teacher, I start with uh, Tinkercad as being the first software that I introduce to my, stu uh, to my STEAM students, and then SketchUp is usually the second software that I introduce. And what's amazing um, about SketchUp is that you can get started with relatively basic concepts, um, but with the tools that are at uh, SketchUp's disposal, you can s go so far beyond um, those concepts uh, after you get started. Uh, this year, some of the highlights that I've seen from my students is I've had students design functional, like handheld mini golf courses um, and pinball machines um, using um, using SketchUp um, that they were then able to 3D print. Um, and um, and so what's awesome is um, they can take um, some of these ideas, um, get those ideas design, but then also get them designed to a degree that they're actually fully functional. Um, my students have also talked about actually like selling them in our school store um, just because of the student interest um, in their designs. And so it can also really lead to sort of an introduction to some entrepreneurial concepts if you have a working 3D printer um, at, in your classroom or at your home as well. And so I'm a big believer in this program um, and have been for a very long time. And we are going to design a just a room. Um, I think I, I like this lesson because uh, designing a room allows you uh, to see some of the basic uh, concepts of SketchUp. It, it allows you to be introduced to some of the tools that it has to offer. Um, but once you master the basics, um, as I said earlier, you can really go so far beyond um, and uh, and create uh, some really amazing things and learn some really vital real world skills. All right. So with that. All said, we'll get started. Um, so just to, to access SketchUp, um, I always just have my students search SketchUp free online. And when they click on SketchUp free, the first, uh, one of the first um, things that you'll see on Google is a link to free 3D modeling software from SketchUp.com. If you click on that, you can click on start modeling. Now it might ask you to create an account. I always recommend that my students um, use their uh, student emails. Um, definitely talk to your parents, talk to your teachers about that if you have any questions on that front. Uh, but what I like is that it's relatively easy just to get started right away. So if you click start modeling, you will see SketchUp loads. And sometimes I will say, like my uh, our, the school that I teach at, uh, Woodland Park Middle School is one-to-one -one Chromebooks. I will say that um, SketchUp works on Chromebooks, but sometimes it can have a bit of a lag. Um, as um, I recommended uh, with Tinkercad and really any 3D design software, I do recommend that you use a mouse uh, just because it makes the user experience a lot better. Um, I am not using a mouse today just to kind of showcase how possible uh, this software is to use. Um, I will say that it does run more smoothly um, on our desktop computers uh, in my Steam Lab. All right, so you'll get something, uh, you'll get a pop-up that says welcome to SketchUp or uh, get a prompt rather that says welcome to SketchUp and then if you click start modeling, all right, there you are. So um, the first thing I always recommend to students um, is don't delete Ty. This is Ty right here um, with the, uh, it looks like the ukulele and the dinosaur shirt. I would not delete Ty. Ty is a two-dimensional person, but what Ty does is Ty gives you scale. Um, I've had students uh, after deleting Ty who have designed skyscrapers uh, that are uh, the size of like a particle that can be viewed only through a magnifying glass. And um, I've also had students um, design a pencil holder that was the size of the Statue of Liberty. Um, Ty is very important because Ty gives you scale so you can see how big the designs you are making are relative to Ty. Um, and that is super important. And so to get started first, I'm going to adjust real quickly just so I have all menus. I can see all of my menus use relative to my video here. I'll adjust the screen right here. Perfect. Okay, so with uh, getting started, um, what I always recommend is uh, starting with the rectangle tool right here. Now, the rectangle tool is in your left-hand menu, 
and the rectangle tool is going to be the seventh button down. And I always reference this to students just in case you're toggling back and forth between my video and the, and um, and SketchUp itself. But I'll try to reference this with every uh, tool that I use on this platform. And remember, we are creating um, a building day or just really a simple room today. But I'm going to click on the rectangle tool, and right away you're going to see a pencil show up and I always recommend that my uh, that you design these or you make your designs within the green and red lines right here so I'm going to use the pencil click on the pencil and then yeah that looks like a good size room right there all right awesome and now you'll notice that I have a two-dimensional rectangle now one thing I really love about SketchUp is how simplistic it is to transform these two-dimensional shapes into three-dimensional objects and so I'm going to go one button down from the rectangle tool on my left hand menu and click on the push pull button now I'll use the push pull button hover over the rectangle, click and drag, and boom, there we go. I always remind my students to make sure your room is bigger than Ty, so that, you know, Ty can walk in. And there we go, we have a three-dimensional object, just like that. And um, the next thing I'm going to recommend is um, creating a door that Ty can walk through. Um, so I'm gonna click on the rectangle button again, and that looks like a good sized door right here. I'm going to click on that, drag it down to the bottom, and then release. And now we have the outline to a door. Um, next step, after creating the outline to the door, and remember that was using the rectangle button, we are going to move from the rectangle button to just the mouse button up here, the select button, excuse me. You're going to click on that, which will give you the select button. You're going to click inside the door and then just click delete and there you go you already have a door now um, i'm also going to click on the roof or the ceiling i'm going to click and then click delete that will give you an interior view a top-down interior view of the room that you're building which i love um, for uh, the purposes of interior design, just allowing you to see the interior of your room, I always think is super important. Now, the next step, I'm gonna get a better view. Um, let's see, actually, you know what? Um, let's, you know, I think those walls are a little too plain. So let's actually adjust right here. We're going to move to the right side menu. And on the menu on the right side, you are going to click on the components button and then click on materials. So what I like is that the components button shows you um, whenever you're introducing different components to your design, it shows you who owns those components. Because sometimes you can load um, you can load um, components into your design or shapes or objects into your design that might be protected. So you can't edit them once you load them into your design. And so I always like seeing um, who owns those components to make sure that one, um, they are fair use, they're adjustable, they're in the public domain. And also, if, and that can be important if you're wanting to 3D print or use these designs um, in any certain capacity. So make sure after you click on the components button, which is the fifth button down on the right side menu I want you to click on the materials button as well and if you notice both components and materials are selected here after clicking on the materials button you are going to click on the browse button all right and you'll notice you have all kinds of options here 3d printing up top uh, but for this design I'm wanting to have fun, and uh, since I'm creating a uh, creating a building right here I'm gonna click on brick cladding and siding and you know what, I like how that brick looks right here. I'm gonna click on that brick. You'll notice a paint bucket will come up on your design. And then you're just gonna click on the wall and boom, you now have brick walls. All right, so after you do that, I'm going to click close panel. So to show you how that works, I'll click on materials again. And on the top of your screen you're going to see an arrow pointed in the right direction you're going to click on that arrow which will then close that menu all right so for the next step i'm going to go back to my left hand menu and i am going to click on the orbit button click on orbit 
I'm going to click and drag and move it so I have a top-down view of my uh, of my building that I'm making. And after I do that, I'm going to go back to materials. And you know what? I think I want to add something on that floor. I'm going to find, you know, there's some carpets here that I like. Ooh, I, you know what? Tile might be fun. All right, I'm going to click on tile right here. This is where students usually make fun of me because I'm not a very good uh, interior decorator. Um, so I'll click on tile and boom. You know what? That tile looks a little outdoorsy. So I'll click on this tile and then there we go. We have something on the floor here and um, so it's not so barren. And what's cool is you can then use this tile here to also decorate the walls on the inside if you want to. Um, but what's cool is that it's not limited. Remember, you can add, um, like if you want wood floors instead, you can click on the wood and add a wood floor. Um, it's really easy and really flexible to really to start interior designing right away. And so I'm gonna click on Orbit, close my panel again, all right. And I'm going to add a chair, show you how to add a chair to get started here. Um, so what's awesome is that uh, Trimble Sketch SketchUp gives you access to the 3D warehouse. Now, in some schools, the 3D warehouse is blocked, um, so you won't be able to access that at school. Um, but uh, that's something um, I think a lot of teachers that I talk to do recommend um, the 3D warehouse and have worked to get this feature unblocked in their schools just because of the amount of potential it offers. Now, something that I tell my students is that there are some amazing things in the 3D warehouse, like uh, things um, such as uh, such as jets and skyscrapers um, and um, and things that are really incredible for the imagination but I have a requirement in my classroom that um, what you create the design has to mostly come from you it can't be a 3d print from another designer um, sometimes there are copyright rules or sometimes there are um, some of those issues that come up if uh, the uh, creator has claimed copyright or asks that those designs not be 3d printed but honestly I think with tools like this it's important to develop your own skills. So I tell my students you're welcome to use uh, objects from the 3D warehouse as long as they are helping your design, as long as they are assisting your design, um, as, lo uh, as long as it's not uh, that you're not printing just solely someone else's design or mostly someone else's design. The main parts of the design have to come from my students. And that's really the rule that I encourage too so that everyone can learn these skills. So I'm going to click on the 3D warehouse, which is the fourth button down on the right side menu. I'm going to click on that. And right away, you'll just see some uh, all kinds of different, uh, uh, different objects. And I'm going to just look for a chair. All right. Let's see if I can find something that looks kind of cozy. Or you know what, I'll do a sofa. How about that? Okay, cool, yeah. So, uh, that sofa looks cool. I'm gonna click on the sofa, click download. It will download the model, import the model, and then there it is. I now have a sofa inside my room. Now, a big question that I often get from students is wanting to rotate uh, because um, it usually isn't aligned uh, with your room or it isn't um, it isn't in the shape in the direction that you want it to be. Um, if you look at all of these buttons right here, if you hover over the design, eventually you'll notice this kind of rotate button comes up that will then let you rotate it however you want to. Um, and at any time, if you actually uh, are needing to move it, rotate it, or adjust the sizing at any time, if you go to this button on your left-hand menu, the move button, you can click on the move button, click on the sofa, or whatever object you import, and then move it wherever you want to. Um, and this also allows you, if you click on a button here, you can move it to the side. 
Um, and if you're at any point where you're needing to make other adjustments, um, if you go to the menu um, and you click on the move button on the left side, I can count real quick. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 buttons down. So 10 buttons down on the left hand menu. Um, if you click on that uh, button, it'll give you a sub menu where you have access to the move, the rotate, and the scaling buttons. If you click on the scale button, it will let you actually adjust the sizing and you'll see that the dimensions aren't locked um, so the creator of this design did not lock the dimensions but you can also adjust the sizing to whatever sizing you need here um, so for this intro design at this point um, I usually uh, have a requirement where my students have to make two rooms they have to include four windows and they um, also um, need to um, they also need to include like a lounging area so like with chairs and some you can also access things like TVs, um, and um, and I also um, usually accept if students are wanting to add like a garage um, where they find like a car in the 3D warehouse that they load into the, that garage. I'm usually pretty accepting of that too. Um, but what I like about this lesson is that just when you create your own room here. Um, and you add um, just little requirements like this. It's what I've always been amazed with is how creative my students are when they create their rooms um, in um, in SketchUp. And SketchUp, what's awesome is that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, if you work on the Arc tool, you can start working with curved lines on your design, which is pretty amazing. Um, and um, so I usually recommend this as a starter lesson to work on the basics. So the rectangle tool, the push-pull tool, the move and sketch scale tools, the rotate tool. I honestly, uh, you know, sort of treat this as sort of a sandbox lesson or a sandbox demo of the SketchUp uh, platform, just because really the sky is the limit when it comes to SketchUp. All right, students, last thing is always, I always recommend that you name the project. It will show you projects here in SketchUp. Um, and then enter a name here. And uh, and so you'll click on, um, so you'll type in your model name. I'll just put Ty's house and click save here. And with SketchUp, um, it does an okay job. I think it auto saving, but I do recommend that uh, since the auto save isn't um, instantaneous, or at least isn't as of the time that I'm recording this video in uh, January 2023, I recommend that the save button is used early and often. So I'll just adjust this here. Click on save. Now it will ask if you want to purge unused items until your uh, design is ready to be 3D printed. I always click no, just because you might have items that you're still adjusting until that time. Um, but I do recommend saving early and often with SketchUp um, just to make sure your design is um, is uh, at the level that you want it to be. And to turn it in, um, you can always click export and or download rather and I always have my students download it as an STL just because then it's very easy to convert to a file type that the 3D printer can read and then it also makes it easy for students to turn in their designs to me on the digital platforms that we use. All right, so uh, students uh, and anyone watching, that's all I have today. Um, as always, uh, don't hesitate to ask your teachers if you have any questions or don't hesitate to ask if you're lost or feeling confused. I think SketchUp is a very powerful tool and uh, thank you so much for listening today. I super appreciate it. See you, everybody.